I'm sure you heard of Skype. It's a free instant messaging program allowing voice and webcam chat with people all over the world. I've been using it to keep track of old friends. We all went off to college a fortnight ago and last week I was talking to Annie. A girl I used to go to school with, we both just moved into our flats, we were both single, and the first semester hasn't even begun. So, we found ourselves with plenty of time to chat. Usually we'd Skype at least once a day. The stuff we talked about wasn't hugely interesting. She just bought new headphones and I had just watched The Princess's Bride for the first time. It was just nice to have some familiar company amidst a time of such great upheaval, you know? Anyway, it was a Tuesday morning and I had been out clubbing the previous night and was pretty groggy and hungover. But I was awakened to the planetive buzzing of a Skype call. Cursing the fact that I left my laptop on and massaging my temples, I stumbled out of bed. Uh, hello? My blurry eyes struggled to focus on the painfully bright monitor before me. Annie was, of course, dressed and made up and grinning as usual. Sporting her new headphones, she gave a cheery wave to which I responded with a half smile. Well, aren't you the life of the party this morning? She teased. You should have seen me last night. <laughs> My dance moves put the whole club to shame. Big fish, little fish, doesn't impress anyone. Hey, don't you have an introduction meeting with your tutor today? I glanced at my calendar, but the ink refused to stop squirming on the page. I assumed she was right, but even the small amount of sunlight that was seeping into my gloomy domain under the curtains was eye-watering. Yeah, fuck that. I groaned. What about you? What are you doing today? Hoping to call Erin. She just took off yesterday during a fire drill. She left a letter on her desk saying she was going home. Which one's Erin again? I asked half serious. You know how it is. Your friends talk about so many people that they're just a blur after a while. Annie made an unimpressed face. My flatmate. She lives across the corridor from me. She just vanished. I mean, it's only been a day, but we've been thinking about calling her parents just to check up on her. I shrugged. <laughs> Do it. Better safe than sorry, eh? Before she could reply, there came a sudden shrieking of an alarm. Annie said something which was drowned out by the noise. I covered my ears wincing. What, what did you say? I asked. She had a sh shout directly into the microphone. I said that's the fire alarm. I better go outside or the warden will have a fit and make us do the whole thing over again. What time shall I call back? I asked, raising my voice as much as my pounding headache would allow. Don't worry. I'll be gone for like five minutes. I'll just leave Skype on. With that, she was gone pulling the headphones off and placing them on the keyboard. After a few minutes, the alarm cut out. Then the door opened. It wasn't Annie, though. It was wearing a blue paint-stained boiler suit, a beanie-style hat, and a mask made with a bleached skull of some goat or sheep. My eyes were drawn to its hand, however, a rubber glove wrapped around a hook. The kind you see behind the counter in butcher shops. For a few seconds, I just sat there numbly wondering if this was Annie playing a creepy joke on me. Then I snapped into action. What the fuck do you think you're doing? I yelled. Who are you? There was no response from the figure. He couldn't hear me. The headphones were still plugged into Annie's laptop. Instead, he just simply stood there, taking in the room. Ten seconds later, I began to approach the desk. I fumbled for my phone. I had to warn Annie. I selected her number from the speed dial, not taking my eyes off the figure on screen. It peered intently into the camera, eyes glittering behind empty sockets. Dial and tone. Click. Ringing. 
The masked figure froze. Then slowly and deliberately it reached its free hand off camera. I squinted against the pixelated image. And that's when my heart sank. I was holding an Emily's phone. She'd left it on her desk. The figure cogged its head to one side throw me what I presume was supposed to be a pitying look before I hit the off button on the mobile and placed it on her laptop. It reached into its pocket and produced something white and dropped to the top of her keyboard. I saw it for a second for it looked like an envelope. It wandered across her wardrobe, opened the door and climbed inside, stooping to fit. It hesitated as it did, so it turned to look directly at the webcam. The light caught its teeth, as I thought it was flashing with a cruel grin. Then it bored the road road shut. I glanced down at my phone. I had to call the police. There was no question of that. But even as I dialed the first nine, I realized the futility of my jester. That would be the bother of the finding and contacting the department in Manning City, 50 miles away. I called anyway, dialing tone. It was like it was ringing. Get through to the emergency series. Which service do you require? Yeah, I need to talk to- I paused mid-sentence. I had paused because the door- had opened and ha Annie hurried inside. Her hair was wet from the rain, and she smiled as she approached the webcam. I yelled as loud as I could for her to run. I felt tears pinching the corners of my eyes. Annie didn't hear me. She sat down, picked up the headphones again, adjusted the strap over her shoulder, and lowered the door to her Hello, sir? What service do you require, sir? Sir, are you hurt? Do you need an ambulance? Are you still there? Sir! Uh, 